Hey everyone, today on Classic Action Figures, we are going to be taking a look at the Max Rebo Band pairs from the 1998 Star Wars Power of the Force line. Here's a look at one of the packages. This one is the last one that came out in the series, and it features the band leader Max Rebo and Doda Bodonawido. At the top we can see the face of Darth Vader, along with the Star Wars Power of the Force logo and the Kenner Collection logo. And on the bottom we see the characters names and the names of their instruments. The back of the package has some great pictures of the characters along with some basic information on the characters. We see that Max Rebo measures 1.4 meters in height, he comes from Orto, and he's the band leader slash keyboardist of the band. The other figure is Doda, and he measures 1.65 meters in height, he's from Rhodia, and he's an instrumentalist for the band. On the bottom part we see the two other pairs that were available, which are Barquin Dan and Droopy McCool. And the other set is Size Noodles and Joe Yauza. And here are the main details for Barquin Dan and Droopy McCool. Interestingly this was the first set that came out and it has a lot more information on the characters. Barquin Dan measures 1.55 meters, He's a musician, his species is Bith, he has no affiliation, he plays the clue horn and comes from the planet Clockdoor 7. Droopy measures 1.5 meters, he's a Kitonak, he plays the Chirinkalu and comes from Kirdo 3. Here's the back of the car for Size Noodles and Joe Yauze. And we can see Size Noodles is 1.6 meters tall. She comes from the Palawick system and of course is the main vocalist for the band. Finally here's Joe Yauza, who is 1.4 meters tall, comes from Endor and he's also a vocalist for the band. I do have to say that I'm not a really big fan of the characters that were added for the special edition movies. I prefer the original trio of Max Rebo, Droopy McCool and Size Noodles. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the actual figures. And here's the first pair of figures, Max Rebo and Doda Bodonawiru. Both of these look quite awesome, especially considering that they came out way back in 1998. This is Max's Red Bull organ, and we can see some really great details, like all the keys which are made of a soft plastic and can actually be pressed. I also like all the rivets around the top of the keyboard, some of the other sculpted details, and of course a place for Max Rebo to be placed inside. And he looks really cool sitting there, jamming on his instrument. I also like his backstory on how he came to play for Jabba. Basically he agreed for the band to play in exchange for all the food they could eat anytime. This apparently wasn't okay with size noodles who of course would have preferred actual money. Anyway Max Rebo is done in an old blue plastic except for his little diaper thing that he's wearing. The figure sculpt is quite good and he does have some decent articulation. He can move his head from side to side, he can raise and lower his arms quite a bit and he can also kick his legs forward. Unfortunately he doesn't have any waist articulation. Next up is Dota and he comes with a slither horn. The figure is a Rodian like Rito and they also did a very good job on the head of the character. His orange and brown tunic are nicely done and there's even some painted highlights on the orange parts of the tunic. The figure has some basic articulation. He can move his head from side to side and can move his arms a bit up. He also has waist articulation and can move from side to side, but he can't really move his legs much due to the tunic. Here's the next set of figures, which consists of Barkin Dan and Droopy McCool. Barkin Dan is the older brother of Figrin Dan, the leader of the modal nodes, also known as the Cantina Band. He's a Bith and has a hairless dome shaped head, which is nicely detailed and also has some painted highlights at the top and front part of his head. The figure is done mainly in an all black color 
and he comes with this intricately detailed instrument called a clue horn. It kind of looks like a bassoon. I really like the brass color that was used to paint this instrument. It really looks great up close. The figure has some basic articulation. He can move his head from side to side. He can move his arms a little bit up and down. And he can also kick his legs forward. And here's Droopy McCool, who comes with an instrument called a Chitin Kalu. And he's so cool that he's actually going shirtless. In all seriousness, he's a very cool looking figure. Here's a closer look at his instrument. I love the sculpt and the weathering paint that was used to highlight all the wrinkles on his body. He also has some basic articulation and can move his head from side to side. He can slightly move his arms up and down. He can twist at the waist and he can also kick his legs forward and sit down. The last pair of figures is Size Noodles and Joe Yauza. It's too bad that they don't come with their microphone stands, since they have no accessories at all, and the original vintage Max Rebo band set did have a microphone stand for Size Noodles and for Droopy McCool. The figures do look pretty good. Here's a look at Joe Yauza. And even though I'm not a big fan of this character at all, I do have to say that they did a good job at recreating the character in figure form. The likeness and paint job on the figure is quite good. The figure also has some articulation. He can awkwardly move his head from side to side. He can rotate his arms and his legs also kick forward. The figure is also quite difficult to stand due to his skinny legs and small feet. Finally here's Size Noodles, and they did a really great job on the sculpt and paint job for this figure. I really like the skin tone that they used, and also the blue patches of the skin. Her face paint is also very good, especially the eyes and the lips. As far as articulation, she can rotate her head from side to side, she can lift her arms. She can rotate at the waist. And she can kick her legs forward. At any rate, I do like these figures, even with their limited articulation. They can still be found online for relatively good prices. Like I said before, it's too bad that the set is missing the microphone stands for a few of the figures. But these are great figures to have if you want to create a Jabez Palace diorama, especially if you combine them with the Power of the Force Jabez Palace 3D diorama. Altogether, they really do look quite awesome. Anyway, I hope you liked this review. Stay tuned to Classic Action Figures for more Star Wars toy reviews and videos. Until next time, take it easy.